Choose. We're Jack. All, I just hit record when you hit choose. Okay. You said choose. Can I leave that in? Great. Hey, let's leave it all in. <laughs> Leave Tim Dillon is one of the most requested guys on this podcast. So thank you. Thanks you for doing a, this, brother. You have a sick audience, if that's the case. <laughs> you got some real, real sick people. I think you're honestly one of the handful of comedians that I connect to. It seems yeah. like you have common sense. I hope. I it mean, seems that way. Yeah, I think I got it uh, in the most fucked up of ways by being a drug addict and uh, losing money and going into... Like, I think... I think as crazy as it is, I think that's how you get common sense is by getting knocked around. Just getting beat the shit out of like just. Yeah, I think that's how I think when I talk to people who've never been knocked around. Right. They they're they're on another planet. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't they don't understand anything other than, you know, maybe they read like an article about it or whatever, but they're not fucking. They've never been through the thing they talk about. Yeah. No, I've been through a hard life, yeah. so I, I think maybe I connect in that way. Yeah, that could be it. So, yeah, you got to experience things and see some dark things to come around to, you know. But you could also go in a different direction, too. But It could get too dark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta get out of the dark eventually, yeah. or it'll just get bad and you'll, you know, You'll end up, God only knows. What, what drugs were you doing? Can I ask? I was doing a lot of blow. I mean, uh, you know, I had phases with different drugs. I had a pill phase. I think the worst was a co- was a coke phase. Oh wow! And that was probably the worst. When I was just drinking and doing blow, uh, that was bad. But I also was a drunk. Yeah. I got rid of every drug but alcohol. So towards the end, I was just drinking every night. Yeah. At a bar up the block from my house called Lisa's Lounge. Shout out. Uh, yeah, shout out Lisa's <laughs> Lounge in Long Island. And uh, it was named after, I swear to God, the owner's daughter yeah. was killed <laughs> in a drunk driving accident. Jesus. And he named the bar after her. And there was a photo of her on the wall. We would all toast to her and go, Lisa. I mean, that's how that's how fucked it was. That's how dark it was in there. He would tell some girl like lost her life from drinking and drinking. Yeah, and her brother, her brother, this guy Junior would would um was one of the bartenders. And then I went back there not to drink. I'm sober now, but I went back there about probably about a month ago. A friend of mine was visiting New York, and I yeah. brought him in there. And uh, he just looked around. He was like, "Man." This is fucked. Like, <laughs> you ever bring somebody to a spot where you used to go all the time and they're horrified? Yeah. yeah. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> you spent time here? I'm like, yeah, it was great, man. Every night. But that then you realize how much of a fucking... And everyone's dead. That's the other thing. I went back and they started telling me all the people who died. Now they're all on the wall next to the daughter. Yeah, they're all on the wall. I mean, they were telling me, they're like, this one's dead. Sue is dead. The owner's dead. And I'm like, yeah, well, this is it. They just drank themselves to death. They just drank themselves to death. And it was a dark spot. It was a corner bar. It was, you know, Long Island corner bar. There was this guy named Bobby Haha. This is a great little story. Just to give you an idea. Is he a comic? Bobby no, ha. Bobby Ha. <laughs> they called him that because he had this crazy laugh. He used to go like this. He used to go, ah! <laughs> like he laughed like he was trying to catch his breath. Yeah. And if you said something funny, he'd go, ah! Sounds like a Scorsese character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy was a mess. And he dated this woman named Sally yeah. who looked like a big tranny but wasn't. Like she was an older masculine grandma. Yeah. Like an old fucking biker grandma. Yeah. Every She couldn't get him to leave the bar, uh-huh. so she would just... In his drink, she would spit a pill. I forget what it was. Maybe it was a Seroquel or something. And he would drink it, and he would just get real woozy, and he'd go, we got to go. Yeah. And that's how she'd get him out of the bar every night. <laughs> so she would shoot a... Uh, she'd drug him. Bill Cosby him. She'd, yeah. She'd Spanish fly him just to get him home. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd stay there all night, and he wouldn't get up for work. So these are the kinds of people that were there. You no, know? I, I, dude, I was a drunk for a long time, and I, I miss those dive bars. Those, yeah, there were some good times, man. The best. Yeah, just yeah. fucking playing a jukebox, putting yeah. money in there, and talking to some scumbag who yeah. lost an arm for some reason. I got a bit on it now where I'm like, the best places to get fucked up are places where nobody's like everybody's given up. Yeah. You know, I see all these people that get drunk at brunch around young professionals. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. 
Go find Elise's lounge. That's where you get drunk. You that's know? where the stories are. Yeah. <laughs> When'd you get sober? 2010. Really? Late 2010. Well, no, maybe summer of 2010. So you're 19 years in and huh? Um, no, I'm I'm 34, so I'm probably like how long am I? How many years am I in? 2010, 2019, about nine years. What's your bottom? What what, what was the thing that? All right. Well, I always say this is funny. I've said this on a, a few podcasts, but my bottom was buying a house. <laughs> you know, with a with a with a, <laughs> with a subprime Holy shit with a subprime mortgage. Oh my god! At 22 years old. You pull, oh. I mean, have you ever gotten so coked up? You woke up next to a house. You know what I mean? I mean, I had no fucking money, dude. I I was a fucking lunatic. People think like, oh, you bought a house, you were doing good. I'm like, no, I had no money. It was a subprime mortgage. I financed 106 percent of the house. I fucking ballooned. The value of the house out so I could take money at the closing. I got the house appraised for more than it was worth. I took money at the closing. And uh, I moved like a family, a Haitian family in upstairs. And I fucking just lived in the downstairs of my house. I don't think I ever even bought a bed. I think I just slept on like a couch. And just was hammered every night in this house that I owned. With a, the best story With ever. a $4,400 a month mortgage. And uh, no fucking, like, and I was a mortgage broker. Like, I was a guy who sold these fuckers. And then, and I was like, yeah, it's all going to work out. Like, everybody thinks that was like boiler room. But the reality was, people, we all thought it was going to work out. Like, everybody had these. Like, all the guys selling these mortgages had these mortgages. They had, like, these oh, interests. so you were one of those boiler room Yeah, dudes? I was Holy one of those shit. Dudes. But it wasn't, a, that's the thing, it wasn't a boiler room. It was like... Everybody thought it was fine. Oh, we all thought it was gonna work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody had them. Like I would not have, I wouldn't have taken a fucking mortgage myself. Yeah, if I thought everything was gonna. Everybody thought that like you had these adjustable rates for two or three years, and then after two or three years, you just get a fixed rate. Yeah, that would be it. What was the movie that came out that tried to explain all that? The Big Short. The Big Sh Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, uh, Bale. Yeah, it's a good movie, but it. It explains the high end better than the, the the fucking retail end of it. Like it explains like the 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 Wall Street guys yeah. and uh, the you know the all that debt that you know the mortgage backed securities like that market the debt market and how you know how it was just completely falling apart. Yeah, but it doesn't really. Ex there's like five minutes in it where it's. There, these, these, these. They go talk to these brokers, and one's like, "Yeah, I sell homes to strippers." Yeah, it's like that's my niche, that's my section of the market, you know. And those are the guys that I spent a lot of time with. But there's like five minutes in the movie about them, uh, so it's not really about the retail, you know, brick and mortar little shop. I mean, I came from Long Island, where like Irvine, California, is where the whole thing started, and then the second biggest. I didn't know that market. Yeah, started in Irvine. It was a, a thing called Countrywide. Yeah. Huge fucking subprime mortgage bank. There was a bunch of... They all started in Irvine, California. And then a lot of them came over to Long Island. Long Island was like the second biggest fucking consolidation of these mortgage oh. banks. Yeah. And you got in on the I got thing. in. I mean, we were, we were... That was what... Everyone was rich. Everyone had Range Rovers. And everybody was doing coke. And everybody was happy. And I said, this seems like a thing for me. And you didn't have to go to school. And... You know, you didn't have to, you could you could come into work when you wanted and you just had to sell things. And I liked sales. I liked the idea of that. It was fun. It was like a high. Yeah. I was also a drug addict. So I was like, oh, I could get, you it's know. another well, high. It's another high. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, and listen, nobody really thought it was going to be like, you know, people now look back at it. And here's the other thing. The people are. Uh, dishonest scumbags that are getting these loans too. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Like, they, they, there's this idea that they're all victims. No, they're not. No, they're not. Yeah. They knew they shouldn't have had this fucking money. You know. It, everybody's in on it. Everybody's in on it. Listen, I'm sure that there was predatory lending and people that didn't understand what they were signing. There's all kinds of shit, but there was a whole hell of a lot of people that were like, "How much money can I get?" and "Fucking when?" Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a question. They're like, "When can we do this?" They're calling you, pitching you. They're like, "I get my cousin can say that I work at his." Fucking Toyota dealership. Yeah, you know, they. This is not. This is not a country of honest people that are being scammed all the time. 
It's a country of degenerates and liars and thieves who are varying degrees of good at that. Yeah. So, like, the guys on Wall Street are real good at it. Yeah. And then some of these fuckers on Main Street are decent at it. And then some people are just fucking along for the ride and they end up, you know, getting fucked. But no, it's, you know, everybody's full of shit. Yeah, everyone's, I said that on Twitter, everyone's full of shit. Everyone's yeah. trying to, like, get ahead somehow. Yeah. They're and angling. The, yeah. And the thing is, when you get big enough in this business, which is what I hope doesn't happen to me when you're a comedian or whatever, whatever happens to people, they start to, they start to treat people like they're children. Mm-hmm. They, there's this weird paternalism thing when you're, like, a big celebrity. You start looking out at the country and you just feel bad for them. Yeah. You just pity them. And you're like, I just, you know, Amy Schumer wrote a thing after uh, Trump was elected and she was like, we just wanted to take care of you. She wrote it on Instagram or it was something like that. Yeah. It was some words, you know, and it was just like, that's why you, you lost. Yeah. They don't want you to take care of them. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. yeah. Do you understand that? <laughs> but no, apparently people don't get it. So Do you get along with Amy? I've never met. We've met very briefly. Oh, okay. So I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we would. I mean, she's Long Island. Yeah. So we got that. I mean, I don't think we'd get along if we started talking. (laughs) (laughs) You know? But you you guys would be good like, hey, how you doing? If we kept it to like (laughs) baked clams and like Long Island stories, I think it'd be good. But I think if it got too deep into any topic. Yeah. Yeah, we'd probably diverge pretty quickly. She was always a real nice. I didn't know her. I don't know celebrity Amy. Yeah, but uh, I do remember when she was filming Trainwreck and she was at the cellar. She came over to say hi. Yeah, she was like how you doing? Are you good? So I was like, yeah. okay, well that's cool. I like her. Yeah, she's fine. I have no problem with yeah, her. Yeah, no issue with her. Okay, I just think that like, uh, listen, I was just I, looking, I was just yeah. looking for my sound bite for the plug. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> she, but I I get listen, I get. I it's not just her. It's a lot of people that I meet that are, you know, they want to, they 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 think they want to help. Yeah. But the way they help actually makes it worse. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. A lot of yeah. celebrities are doing that. They they think they're yeah. they're trying to change things and they have they they have no well, idea. Well, if they didn't want Trump to win again, they'd shut up. <clears throat> if if, if celebrities didn't want Trump to win again, they would Shut up. But do you notice yeah. there's such a backlash because of this? I think yeah. a lot of people, like the thing celebrity, like it, people are kind of turned off by it now. They don't. Yeah, no one cares. The middle of America. They, they don't care. They don't give a shit about Alyssa Milano. No one cares, dude. Yeah. No so, one cares. You see these tour buses in LA, they got nobody on them. Yeah. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares. It's been demystified. Trump broke it. He broke Hollywood, I think. I think what happened was people started, like, when he got elected president, something happened where there was this massive shift uh, where people were like, this is fucking wild. This guy just beat everybody. He beat all the CEOs. Where you're the left or right. You left the, or right. It's the greatest victory in the history of victory. hundred percent. And I think something like, I think after that happened, there were no more sacred cows, celebrities. Nobody cared anymore. Yeah. Nobody cared. It was like, oh, you're nothing. I can beat you. Yeah. This guy just beat you. Now, obviously, this guy's a billionaire. This guy was a celebrity, whatever. But I think there was something to the idea of the way that society just kind of had these untouchable groups of people, whether they were the Clintons or the Bushes, and I think Hollywood fell into that. And I think because Trump won, a lot of people were like, oh, you're all beatable. Yeah. You know? He, I always use the expression, he was the grenade from the American people. Yeah. And they blew up the whole yeah. structure. Everything yeah. came crumbling down. Yeah. And we're going into 2019. It's going to it's going to ramp up all over again and the guy's going to win again. He's going to win again because people don't know why he won. So, if you don't know why somebody's beating you in a fight, it's hard to to win. Yeah. And they don't know why he won. They don't get why he won. And uh they won't get it. And I don't think they'll I think he'll he'll win again and they still won't get it. Right. I I don't think they'll ever get it. I I was always confused of why they were so passionate about Hillary. Like, if you do your homework on this yeah. horrible woman, like, why are you putting all your 
eggs in that basket. Well, I think a lot of it is just like Holly, Hollywood and, and what like that. It's it's just another version of Hollywood. Yeah. Like it's just casting somebody. So you're just casting somebody who's a woman, who you know, who's got name recognition, yeah. who supposedly quote unquote deserves it. Like that's the thing. It's like a lot of these you know, you look at these people like Ocasio Cortez, you know, she's got says some things that are good and stuff, but it's like she was cast. Yeah. You know, she's young, bright, attractive, female woman. of color. Like she's cast in that fucking role. And I mean, quite literally, I mean, just as Democrats did a whole thing where they recruited people from all over the country to fill that to challenge this guy for uh, uh, all over New York, rather. To challenge this guy, they looked at people's headshots and bios, and they chose her. Yeah. Of course, yeah, why yeah. wouldn't you? You could choose fucking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah, the way, yeah. a lot of socialists look like me. <laughs> the fat guys <laughs> running their mouths. Nobody wanted that. A lot of fat white guys talking about equity and socialism. They wanted this hot Latina who represented her community, and I get why. Right. But th- you were cast, and and Hillary was cast, and they the movie bombed. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the movie bombs. It didn't work out in the box didn't, office. Didn't work out. The people did not come out to see the movie in the way that you hoped. And then you got a fucking bomb on your hands. And then you start saying that the other movie was a Nazi. Yeah. You're like, well, of course, the other movie, because Russia, <laughs> Russia bought all the tickets. And you're like, oh, you're, you're not even, you just got to own that you made a shitty movie. Yeah. Because that's what it is. That's really what we are. When we're electing a president, we're electing a movie. Yeah. Because we're going to all watch a movie for four years. And everybody wants to watch Trump. Nobody wants to watch fucking Hillary. And if you think about it, this guy's generating revenue. He's generating. Oh, yeah. SNL <laughs> has yeah. ratings because of this guy. Of course. And everyone does. Stephen Colbert is have. He's like. They the all pack. listen. Here's the secret. They all love him. That's the to. secret. They all love him. They, they hate and love are very close. It's the same amount of time you spend thinking about the person. They love the guy. Without him, a lot of them wouldn't have jobs. It's true. He's invigorated that segments of the economy. I mean, you know, and I think people... And he changed are, the whole political system, too. You're never going to go back yeah. to the old, we need to do that, yeah. whatever, you know. That was- well, you might. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I you, you'd wonder. It's a great question. You'd wonder about that. You know, we have a weird thing in this country where we kind of forget and move on real quick. So you wonder if we go back to like that eventually. And like, I don't know. To the old school politician. Yeah. I think he changed the game, man. I mean, I th- it's very possible. It's very possible that he did. I think we'll, we'll see going forward. But I think people right now are just so tired. It's like tiring, you yeah. know? Everything's political now. Every movie, every movie. Everything's politicized. Every movie review. Every review of an album, any anything, it's all talking. It's all through the lens and the framework of politics or social justice. It's fucking Tim. I'm literally annoying. going crazy in this town. I'm falling yeah. apart. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm because of this everything. Like I'm, I can't hide it anymore. And yeah. I, I know I look like a crazy man on Twitter. Yeah, it's because I'm fucking going crazy because everyone's lost their goddamn minds over this. Yeah. It's too politicized. No one has common sense. Everyone's yeah. full of shit. Yeah. I'm having a meltdown right now. I'm freaking yeah. out right now. Yeah. And you're, <laughs> you're home. <laughs> what What do you think? What, 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 what? How do you How do you get over that? I don't know. I'm yeah. trying. I got. I, I got to see somebody because I'm really. When I started comedy in 2005, like, yeah. it was so fun, man. Yeah. It, I mean, it was during. It was when MySpace Dane was taking off. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I started out here, and I, I just loved going to the clubs and yeah. telling jokes and. You know, there were a couple like comics that were political, but you know, like the Gene Garofalo's, and that's fine. Right? They yeah, were, yeah, yeah. And I was all about that. But uh, whatever's going on now is it's really pushing it's annoying. Me. I think it'll end though. I think you just got to focus. So, yeah, just focus on that. I think. I think so it'll I see end. guys like you. Yeah. Like I'm like attracted to guys like you who have their fucking shit. Like it, like everything you're saying is common sense. It's, yeah. And people just don't seem to have that. No, and I think you also just got to stay. Like I stay away from everybody. Like yeah. I live here, but I. I talk to a few people. I do my podcast. I do shows. It's very weird that you live here, by the way. Yeah, I think it is too. I think it is too. I agree. I want to live in Texas. I'm from New York. I love New York, but I'm here now. I well, your career is doing great, so you got to see. Good, what it, yeah. it's good. I mean, I'm not. I'm living in a room, but I mean, <laughs> I'm living in a room, somebody else's fucking house. But it's good, and I don't mind being here because I don't. 
people invite me every now and then to a barbecue and stuff, and I'm like, I don't want to go. Yeah. I just don't want to. I don't care. I'll spend time with a few people or alone. You don't want to go to Tom Green's barbecue? <laughs> Maybe that. I don't know. But like, you know, I think sometimes you just got to not fucking let everybody get in your head and just, yeah. you know, go take a walk. Go, you know, fucking ignore everybody. I just ignore everybody. Yeah. I think that's really the move. Maybe that's what I got to do. I think that's part of what I keeps me sane. I don't let everybody in my head. Yeah. Have, did you ever speak to Pat? And like one on one, I've never met him. Uh, no, I, I never, I've never met the guy either. And yeah, and it started with Sam Tripoli because right. Tripoli's a friend of mine, and he, uh, he, he kind of turned me on to the whole woke Patton. Right. So I started kind of uh, yeah. ghost following him. Right. And I just yeah. see, I just saw him. He's an insider now. He's an inside guy. Yeah. And it was bothering me. And I just one day tweeted at him like. Basically calling him a Hollywood suck up, right? Because some some comment Jordan Peele made, and yeah. then it just became this avalanche of thing, crazy thing. And I got for some at one point I was pushed, I was considered alt right. Well, it wasn't even thing. a political yeah, thing. It's the were, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. They're calling they're calling me Owen Benjamin. I'm like, no, dude. It's like his. Yeah, he turned this political man. Yeah, I try to stay out of that shit because like. I don't know any of these people, right? So yeah. I don't know these people. Maybe they believe the things they're saying. Maybe they don't. I I tend to believe that a lot of them don't. No. Right? They're headline guys. Yeah. You see the headlines. A lot of them, and- yeah. I think a lot of them are full of shit. But, you know, on Twitter, it's very hard to have any productive thing. So I just try to say dumb shit and funny shit and whatever. And it's like, I don't love Trump. I don't think Trump believes anything. Like, no. all the Trump supporters get mad at me because I'm like, this dude's full of shit. Yeah. He's a huckster, too. Yeah. Like, he doesn't care. There's no wall. Any of the shit you thought was going to happen is not happening. So um, I just occupy this space of, like, trying to call shit out in, like, a funny way. But, yeah, man, I think I think... You got to just embrace the lonely road. Yeah. And that's the shitty thing. But that's kind of what I do where I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah. I don't. I've been to some of these parties and dinners of people where I'm looking at these people. And I'm like, you guys are mentally ill. Yeah. But that's the point of this whole town. The point of this whole town is for people to live on another planet. So if I'm sitting there trying to bring them down to earth, yeah. I'm the idiot. Right. Like I'm the asshole. Right. So it's like, well, I should just not be there then if the whole fucking thing is going to be me being like, well, actually, I mean, well, you know, maybe everyone's not a neo-Nazi. <laughs> maybe ev- maybe 60 million Americans aren't neo-Nazis. You know, you say that at dinner, then they're like, well, maybe you're a neo-Nazi. And I'm like, okay, what are we, kids? Yeah, everyone's a neo-Nazi. Everyone's racist. It feels it's- like we're playing a dumb game, like you're like tag, Nazi, and run away. It's, it's not real. Like, so when you're in L.A., it's like it's like that game times a million. It's yeah. like people are fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> they're out of control. You and know? I mean, I, I, I admit I'm a mentally unhinged guy. Like, we're I'm, all mentally unhinged. But, I, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it. But yeah. at the same time, I like to think I'm a, like I have common sense. I'm not yeah. going to name the comic because I don't feel like getting into it. It's yeah, like, <laughs> they were talking about the election on a show. I'll just say a show. Sure. And I'm listening to these two comics, and I'm like, they have no idea what reality is. No, it's it was no. like I had to like turn off the. I'm yeah, not, yeah. It's so I don't know. I mean, maybe this is professionism for me. Maybe I need well, to, you know, man. Now yeah, it, I'm going to get into, uh, mortgages and buy a house. Now it, pay, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> over. You should have done that a few years ago. Now with like Patreon and podcasts and shit like that, I think we can all just do our own thing. That's one thing. Yeah. I think I think we were at the Hollywood Improv and Rogan was talking. You remember we were there and he took down that photo off the wall? Yes, I do. <laughs> I won't say so it. funny. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I remember him saying, he goes, you got to build your own pirate ship. Yeah, he was right about that. I think he's right about that. I think that like, I don't know, dude, a lot of these people fucked with me a little bit. Like I'll have a lot of meetings, but nobody ever does. Like we nothing ever goes anywhere. Right. You know what I mean? Because I think they Google me like before. So when you somewhere, walk in. Well, I think I have the meeting and then between the meeting and like them writing a check, I think they're like, oh yeah, I don't. I don't know if I want to buy a ticket for this. But why? Like, if you're pitching a show, yeah. like, I, I mean, do, do you have to fall in line? With, yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you got to be a vegan. You uh, got to. 
feminist. You gotta. You be, gotta kind of do the whole thing. You gotta. You gotta play the game. I'm way too outspoken. I'm I kind of say whatever. Oh yeah, you're bad. We're, we're shot. <laughs> Listen, I say whatever I want. It's the reason I do this. I say what I want. Yeah, that's why I, I, I enjoy you. Yeah. So I mean, I can't. You can't. I can't. And I've already said a lot of shit. Like, I, I'm. So if you really, if you're a major corporation. And you want like the woke guy that'll never get in trouble? You're never gonna write me a check. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like some crazy, you know, uh, all right. But it doesn't matter because as soon as you're like, hey, maybe there aren't 300 genders. If you say that, yeah. If you just go, you know, I gotta be honest. Maybe, maybe, not definitely, <laughs> but maybe, maybe. There are not 300 genders. All right. Right. <laughs> right. So immediately it's like, well, we don't want to do the show now. So I'm like, okay. Oh. Doesn't matter what else you say. You can say I support trans people, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm a, it doesn't matter. As long as you challenge one fucking thing, I think these fuckers. Or if you, if I did get a show, I would have to fight every day about what went on there. Like if Comedy Central, which I did a pilot for, you know, I think I could make a really funny show, but we, you know, creatively it would be maybe challenging because, like, you know, right? We would have we might butt heads. It's 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 weird because there are some guys who broke th through the wall, like Ari. Ari broke through the wall. Yes, and it's I don't know if they're grandfathered in at this point. Yeah. But it's a guy who... I think you can break through the wall. You just got to keep banging your head against the wall. Yeah. So I think I think Ari's a great example of somebody who's able to do it. Maybe maybe I'm I figure out a way to do it. I'm not I'm not saying I'm completely like oh it'll never happen, but I mean as of right now I don't imagine but, I'm getting a development deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send this podcast. You're going to be fine. I'm going to yeah. send it to Warner Brothers. You're yeah, good. Yeah, um, But I was talking to Godfrey about this, too. Yeah. Like at one point, talent stopped being rewarded. Like yeah. In any profession, sports, you know, if you jump yeah. the highest, you can yeah. catch the ball, like whatever. But in comedy... You're obviously a funny comic, and yeah. Godfrey's a f phenomenal comic. It's amazing, yeah. It's and amazing. he still can't. Why? Why is that not being rewarded? A guy who does a different hour every single night, who closes out the cellar with standing ovations. Why is that not being rewarded? Well, I think stand-up's no longer the thing, so I think that's part of it. I don't think anyone's really truly excited about stand-up anymore. And I, I mean, I don't say that happily because I love doing stand-up, but I don't think any. I think everything is your phone now. Yeah. And I think every to catch people's attention, it's got to be they're on their phone all day. Um, I mean, I did laugh Boston. I had a great set. My cousin was in the ladies' room. She heard a woman go, that was fucking so good. I'm so glad we came to this. And another one went, yeah, what was that guy's name? And then the other one was like, I don't really know. Anyway, where are we having brunch tomorrow? <laughs> they don't give, it's over. It's People go out to shows and it's over. And they just saw this fucking funny thing. Uh, I, I think it's very hard to build a fan base through stand-up. So I think it's really like podcasting and social media and things like that. And I, I saw that at Skankfest. Yeah. Because... What, people were more into the live podcast 100 percent than dude. the actual stand up dude, of shows. course stand up feels antiquated yeah the setup punchline format of it we're living in a world of trump dude we're living in a world of a guy the president gets out and says whatever the fuck he wants yeah. so the idea of like a guy getting on be like hey rah, 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 like there's a, it's it's you know i love stand up i love guys that do it in that very technical way i do it in a less technical way but i still i mean there are jokes there's punch on his premise setups but i do look at like what's what's out there and i say i think that probably right now people are more attracted to podcasting because it's kind of freewheeling guys seeing whatever the fuck they want i'll still go in the room when david tells there no matter what of course but even dave he, i think i heard him on a podcast too he's like bringing people up on stage it's like a yeah. whole thing it's yeah. like uh you know he's doing the bumping mics yeah. So yeah, he's stand up itself, the pure stand up. That's one of the reasons I kind of I, I, I like LA a little bit is because there's people out here that are like, let's make some videos, let's do some shit, let's do some other shit because, you know, the reality is when you're famous, people love seeing you do stand up. Yeah. 
before you're famous, like Godfrey's a phenomenal comedian, but what, the currency in being a phenomenal comedian right now, I don't know what it is. There's too many of them. Yeah. There's just too many of them, and people aren't finding it. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not finding you because there's so much noise out there, so they got to find you through, like, another thing. Another vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of videos, this is off topic, but yeah. I love the one you did with the pink wall. That was a fun <laughs> one. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, it shows you how in- mentally ill uh, people here are, and that it is not like... You know, there's a wall in the middle of Los Angeles is painted pink where tourists and what, and then Instagram people will stand in We're front of it. We're a mile and a half from it right now. Yeah, and they take photos of it. Less probably. They take photos of it in front of themselves in front of that wall. And I mean, these people are, you know, I, I think the reality is we're at the end of the post-human era. Like I think, I th- not the end of the post the beginning of the post-human era. Like I think... These phones in 20, 30 years are going to be inside of us. I believe that. I believe it's coming. Yeah. I believe you're starting to see it. I believe like we're already starting to fuse with technology because we can't go anywhere without a phone. Everything is mobile. Everything's on your phone. And when you see these fucking psychopaths standing in front of the pink wall and it's like their phone is a person and they're like looking at their phone. Like, I just think that we're, we're heading towards something. I think all these fights we're getting in are not even political fights. Yeah. I think we're just starting to go insane yeah. because we don't know how to handle this kind of technology. We've just never had it. And we're, the way that we process information, the way that we relate to each other, it, 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 we're going to have to then, we're going to have to either abandon it, which we're never going to do. No. Or we got to merge with it. Like Elon Musk is like, if we don't merge with this shit, it'll defeat us. If we don't merge with artificial intelligence, it's just going to come in so and stop us So the phone will out. be in our body within 10 years. Something like that. Some sort of weird... Some, if we don't merge with the machines, the machines are going to take us out because why wouldn't they? What do we do for that? As soon as you create AI... So Terminator is, is a real life story. I mean, I think so because you got to realize AI could just read every book that's ever created. It could read how it was created. It could read everything and then all of a sudden it just has all the information... On Earth, instantaneously, uh, and then what's it going to do with us? Yeah. It's going to see a bunch of fucking guys on stage with microphones. Yeah, they're going to go. This is a problem. We don't need this. <laughs> By the way, people are saying that. So God only knows what machines will say. Right. You know, right. people have given up on fucking stand-up comedy. Machines will fucking go in there, and I just think that like the changes that are coming over the next 20, 30 years are going to be wild, dude. They're going to be so crazy that it's it's unfathomable to most people. What's going to happen? I want. I always say I wanted to. I wish I was born in the fifties and I died in two thousand thirteen. Yeah, I didn't want to see this. Yeah, I didn't want to see this technology. I didn't want to know Bill Cosby rape people. Yeah, I didn't want to know. I didn't. I didn't want to see. Well, he didn't. Of- but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's the clip. Um. Yeah, I mean, I could. I could see that. I think it'll be fun, though. I think it'll be fun. I think it's going to be fun. You just got to go with it. Maybe I need a. I need a, your attitude. Well, you just got to go. It's just all coming. It's yeah. all coming. It's all over. You know, people got to realize that you can't keep fighting, trying to, like, the amount of comics I've met that are, like, upset. They're like, well, this guy's a phenomenal comic, and he can't get any. I'm like, yeah, because it's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a game show host as president. <laughs> Bad Baby, the chick who's on Dr. Phil, who told her mother, I'll catch you outside and I'll kick your ass. He's a multimillionaire. Yeah. She's a multimillionaire. There's billboards over on Sunset. She got famous threatening to beat her mother or, or threatening to beat some of the audience up. Whatever. She's a multimillionaire. There's 14-year-old kids with face tattoos who are rappers. Everyone loves it. Everyone thinks it's great. So Little Nas X is considered the greatest thing. Yeah. He has and, one song. And it was like a joke. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter anymore. What's good is bad. What's bad is good. It's really over. So if you approach it with that attitude, it's great. <laughs> if you're still trying to find meaning in this garbage dump, then you're going to go nuts. That's what's going on with You'll me. You'll go insane. That's where you're at right now. You're where I was a year or two ago. Yeah. And dude, everything will get better once you just let go. When you just let go. This became a therapy session for Yeah, me. dude. When you just let go, you laugh. Dude, you laugh. I laugh so much. I laugh to myself. That's why I don't need to be around other people. I just look at the fucking world. I laugh. I, I watch shit. There's this new girl, Billie Eilish. Have you seen her? No. What's her story? 17 or 18. She's got these weird videos where she's like bleeding through her eyes. She does all this weird satanic occult imagery. It's fucking really creepy. 
And uh, I just said something better on Instagram. They just fucking yanked it off because apparently, usually I get a lot of like, I'm not, you're not creating a safe environment. Um, and she doesn't even sing. She's just going, huh, bah, bah, bah. there's no singing. It's all clothes and style, attitude, marketing, music, production. It's all, none of it is organic. None of it is raw. None of it is good. None of it is the feeling you got when even you heard somebody like Amy Winehouse sing. That wasn't that fucking long ago, yeah. right? Uh, there's none of that feeling. It's the feeling of a complete, you know, these people are just created in a lab <laughs> and brought out. And they're like, this is the new witch that everyone's going to, you just laugh. If you, tr- if you try to go, well, what happened? We had Aretha Franklin. Now we have her. Your your mind will melt. Yeah, you just gotta laugh. You just gotta laugh and be like, "This is what we're doing now." Damn it! Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, this is what we're doing. I just watched the Blues Brothers the other day. Yeah, and I was just like, "Yeah, John Lee Hooker, you Aretha Franklin." Yeah, yeah, man. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, this movie would never be made again. And the talent in this movie is mm. never gonna be touched in any film, any production. Yeah, dude, it's one of those things where. I think that's been the biggest breakthrough for me is stop trying to understand why things are happening the way that they're happening and accept that things are just going to go the way they're going to go and that, you know, I'm not looking for justice in in anything anymore. I mean, I'm like, I don't want people to get murdered. I don't want people to get raped. I do care about certain things. I want freedom. I want rights. I want other people to have freedom and rights. I'm not totally checking out, but in terms of like the entertainment business or popular culture or mainstream culture, it's kind of a it's a joke. Yeah. So to me, maybe now, I need to buy a house. Maybe I need a bottom so I can. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't need to buy a house, but you just got to divorce. Start accepting that's like bad is good. Okay. It's a crazy thing to accept. Once you start accepting that bad is good, you'll understand a lot of things. Yeah. Because you'll be like, oh, this is horrible. That's why it's the number one thing. Okay. Because. Now it doesn't matter if something's a joke anymore. Like, were we all making fun of the Little Nas X song, or did we all love it? And does it even matter? Yeah. Does it matter? Was Trump a joke? It doesn't matter. He's a president now. So all of that shit, like, the line between something being just funny and something that you're goofing on and ripping on and being like, this is ridiculous, and it being the thing has never been less. There's never been less distance between a joke and the fucking, you know, the thing. The one thing I do enjoy is the gatekeepers are becoming weaker and weaker because of technology. They're they're almost done. Yeah. They're almost done. Um, they're weaker and weaker. But all of it is a function. Here's the thing. So some of this will be a function of them being weak, you know, because the gatekeepers suck, right? Yeah. The people also suck. So now you have two options. The gatekeepers suck. The people suck. The people are not going to choose the good people. Right. It's just not going to happen. Uh, the gatekeepers were not going to choose good people either. So the reality is, is you had a hybrid of the for a while of like both of them. Yeah, where it's like the gatekeepers served the function, the people served the function, because the, all the things that we hate or we think is stupid, the people think it's great. Yeah, yeah. the people think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They love it. It's great. You name a comic that you think sucks, I guarantee I agree with you. They're filling theaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't really put my trust in the people either. So I'm very careful. This is why this is the great self-help book. It's called, well, it's all over. So if it's all over, I don't look to the people aren't going to save us. The gatekeepers aren't going to save us. No one's being saved. So I just look at that and I go, oh, great. This is funny. This is fun. Yeah. I'm not like some of my friends are like, well, power to the people. If you put it in the hands of the people, it's all going to be okay. No. Yeah. No, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Right. You know? Well, one, one good thing I saw the other day, and I think you, you retweeted it, was when Seinfeld put Mark Norman over. Yeah. And right. it, I go, that's that's old school Hollywood. That's it's great. Carson calling you to the couch. It's great. And he's a great comic. And that's what... If you're a person in power or have any kind of juice, yeah. just helping somebody out that way. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I hope people care. Right. I'd like to think that. Who knows? But who knows? Who got, knows? You've given me a I lot. love Mark. I think he's brilliant. I I don't... If I, I can't have faith in the... I have no faith in the people. Right. I, I it, it, and, and that's how I'm able to... I just don't... But I also have no faith in the gatekeepers 
who are also the people. They're also people. I, I, I have faith in if you work hard, good shit can happen. But in terms of justice, I don't look for justice. I don't look for like the, the, the funny guy getting ahead. Right. If it happens, I'm all for it. But too much of it doesn't happen. And then there's a million reasons why it doesn't happen. But I, I'll drive myself crazy. Yeah. If I, I mean, look at every movie at the box office. It's either a Marvel movie. I mean, it's garbage. Can you, if, if you, if you were still shocked by every movie that sucked, can you imagine if you still walked in and you're like, this is bad. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it's bad. You eventually have to accept that the, the movie industry in this country is dark money funded by Chinese billionaires making movies that they can sell to the United Arab Emirates or China or wherever. They don't give a fuck about making good movies. The majority of the movie industry, the, the money in the movie industry right now doesn't give a shit about making good artistic movies. Right. They're in it to make big blockbusters that sell overseas. There's a million articles about that. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's fucking the way that they're operating. Yeah. It's the only way that they can recoup the crazy investment they put in these fucking things. We'll never see Less, a movie like Shawshank again in the No, theaters. no. Yeah. Less Americans are, are going to the fucking movies. It just is what it is. So TV is a little better. Like Netflix is a little better and whatever is a little better because that's the shit that we still consume. Yeah. So there's some good shows on that and there's a whole lot of shit. Do you remember back in the day when it was, when a movie actor... Did a commercial? They thought he was a scab, a piece of shit. Or yeah. If he now did, it's it, yeah. It's like the other way around. It's yeah. weird. And it, now commercial actors are killing themselves because <laughs> they, they fucking every you know movie actors are doing it. Yeah. And they're like, why the? And then animated. They're gonna animate. They'll have a booger do it on Mucinex. <laughs> why the fuck do I need you? So at the risk of depressing everyone, because it's to me it's freeing. It's not depressing. It's freeing. It's depressing if you think Shawshank's coming back. Yeah. And you expect it. Yeah. And then you're disappointed when you don't get it. It's depressing. But it's actually cool if you just go, oh, yeah, we had that period. And now we have this period. And if another Shawshank comes down the road, then fucking great. But probably not. Yeah. And I'm starting to become a back in my day kind of guy. Yeah. But honestly, back in my day, shit was great. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Well, that's the thing. I, I, don't, I don't even look at it like back in my day. I just say... Like, I think the way to not seem like old or out of touch is to just embrace the the destruction of everything you love. <laughs> you know? This podcast is for me. I don't care who's yeah. listening. I needed this. I mean, you just go, I just go, yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. I need that perspective. What's next? <laughs> this person? Good. Okay. I don't fight it anymore. I don't I don't see a way out for this country. I don't see a way out. I don't see a way out. I I mean, I, maybe somebody could tell me this is the problem with all political people. They're like, if we just did this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. There's a million problems. I don't, you know, I don't think we're ever going to get back to where we were in the fucking 50s or 60s or wherever where people were taking two vacations a year, two weeks of, you know. They owned a house. They had a family. They were able to afford. I mean, I don't know how the fuck that happens. Yeah. Hopefully, it gets better than it is now. Yeah. Just doesn't. I mean, look all over the world at all these problems, and it just it's too many crazy people. There's too many weapons. There's too much disease. Climate change, food shortages, things like. I mean, you really does this really turn around? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it does. I don't know. I watch these movies. You know, the end of the world movies. Yeah. And I kind of secretly wish for that. I, I want to. Yeah. I want to be like Red Dawn. I want to go to the mountains. I want to, you know, yeah, clean out a super store and yeah. I kind of want to. I, I think that, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the life I would like to live at this point. It might. Do you ever think? Do you ever think of of uh, doing like going and taking a year? Because I think about this. I just don't do it. Uh, do you ever think of just taking a year and going and living somewhere yeah. natural? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I I know Ari has, does these little like yeah. Just, I, I would like just to be off the grid completely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I definitely would consider doing that. If yeah. I'm in a financial bracket where I'm happy, I think I'd pull the trigger. Yeah, because I think that can help and that can kind of restore sanity. I think New York and L.A. are just insane places. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine for a while as long as you're – you can't be sane here. Yeah. If you're sane here, you're crazy. Yeah. So you can either kind of detach from it or – 
go somewhere where you could just kind of chill. I mean, Ben Glebe's running for president. Yeah, he and think, he means he thinks he is. <laughs> he's, he's doing he everything. He thinks he is. He's, he's doing everything you're supposed he's, to you do. Know, but he's not in the debates. Nobody cares. Again, no one cares. Yeah, yeah. It's whatever he's doing. No one cares. <laughs> that's you know, and that that's like a guy like that. Whatever. Like no one cares. Like do whatever you want. That's what I tell people. No one cares. <laughs> Tweet all day about the uh, if you whatever issue is your favorite issue. No one cares. No one cares. Trust me. Nobody gives a shit about anything that anybody does. Nobody cares. And you can do whatever you want. It can be elaborate. You can uh, wear a costume. You can get all your friends to a live podcast. You could anything you want to do. Yeah. It will maybe make you a few bucks. Might make somebody chuckle. But in the grand scheme of things, no one cares. You have no impact. That's it. I can prove that because everybody with a platform, every human being with money, everybody they said, do not vote for Donald Trump. And he fucking won. Yeah. So if those people, I mean, Louis C.K. came out and was like, I'm not voting for Trump. Vote for Hillary. Yeah. Okay. He's the biggest. He was the, at that time the biggest comedian in thy world. Um, and it didn't matter. So, to me, if the biggest comedian in the world tells you to do something that doesn't fucking matter, yeah, then what do we do? What are these fucking open mic people? Like, what are you? What are you even doing? That was like Louis. I, you know, since we're on that topic, he tried to play the game, and yeah. and when all that shit, they just basically chewed him up and spit him out. Like he tried to play Hollywood, and now he's like, oh, what the fuck was I thinking? Well. <laughs> I think he was smart to do what he did. I mean, listen, I think well, any of us would like, you know, if we were given those opportunities, you know, to make the shows and to make the movies and stuff. I was just thinking that on the way here. Yeah. If the, the fucking, the, the new um, MIB movie yeah. looks terrible. Right. Atrocious. Yeah. And I, I said to myself, if they asked me to be in this movie, I'd say no. Yeah. I don't care how much the money is. This movie's a piece of garbage. I was yeah. like, screw that. Really? I, I really do. Oh, like, good for you. Yeah. It's like, I, would, see, I would do it. Yeah. See, I would do it. I, I, I got angry. I was like, I, I can't. I don't know if I could. See, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, one, to, no one cares. That's right. Going back to your. No one cares. <laughs> your, your mantra. No one cares if you did a <laughs> shitty movie. You would just have, you would have a lot of money. If they came to you and said, here's 300 grand yeah. and you did the movie. Now all of a sudden you own a condo or a house and you don't have to really do anything anymore. Right. And, you know, who cares? No one cares. Okay. <laughs> so we go, oh, you're in a shitty movie. They'll love it. This they're podcast gonna, is going to be called No dude, One Cares. they're going to love the new MIP. They don't, they're going to love it. The people are going to think it's great. They're going to fucking recognize you. It's, no one, it doesn't matter what is and isn't good. People don't, yeah. this isn't a country of like sophisticated people that are demanding the best entertainment. Yeah. Patrice was basically ignored. Geraldo was ignored. Like the greatest comics, the people that we all love, we're barely, barely registered, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and there's great comics that have been famous, too, but, like, I just go, take the money. Take yeah. the money. But going back to Louis, I, I yeah. interrupted you. you. No, I mean, you know, the thing with, with with that whole thing is, like, they threw him overboard. Yeah. Um, But he was also a guy, man, that was, like, a really, really, really talented guy, and he could do a lot of different things. So, you know, at his... Well, he you know, still is. Of course he is. Yeah. So you got to do what he did. Like if you were at that level and you had all of that, you know, energy and talent, you would want to make TV shows. You'd want to produce things. You want to. It's what a lot of people will end up doing. Um, and maybe he'll be back. In yeah. A few years, you know, to do that type of stuff. I, I don't a, know. I have a joke in my act. I, I, I call the uh, Me Too movement the ice bucket challenge of sexual assault. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because it, it's it, it's all everyone's just jumping on board with whatever. Yeah. And and people love a pile on in this country, man. They love a pile on. People love a pile on. I think in the beginning it was very different. I also think, you know, Louis did the thing as gang fast. No one cared. There was three three people on Twitter. Was three blogs. But those three people, for some reason, yeah. have a, this megaphone. And it's, it's all perception. It's only a megaphone. If you delete the app, they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Go to a grocery store. No one's talking about it. Yeah. Like, it's really not as big of a deal. I, I get it. We're all on there. We all get the fucking things. But, like, you forget. Go ask a regular person. They don't even know what happened to Louie. Yeah. They don't even know why he's not around. 
Well, that's my problem with the disconnect between this town and the middle of America. Yeah. Like, I, I, I was just, well, I don't know what the hell I was. I was just in uh, Michigan yeah. after shows talking about, they, they really, they don't care. They, they, they're, they don't care about any of this. Louis, yeah. Me Too, nothing. Yeah. It's not even on their... They just want they just want uh, some disposable income. They go out to dinner, the Applebee's, go see a movie, and that's about it. Yeah, that's as far as it goes. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. It's kind of like that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, almost. You know, it would be crazy if people in LA acted like them, and it would be crazy if they acted like people here. Okay, you know, yeah, I see, yeah, I see that. Just the way it is. Yeah, like that's what it is. This is a city of people that want to be famous. They want to be stars. They want to be fucking whatever. They want to have notoriety. Um, I would. I probably hate living in Michigan. You know, as much as I hate LA. Yeah. That life sounds horrible. What you just described sounds horrible. <laughs> they just want to go to Applebee's and have. I mean, that sounds horrific to me. You know. Yeah. It sounds like a horrific life. But that's just the way I'm built. I'm sure some people love that. Right. You know? No, I know what you're saying. If I describe my life to people, they go, that sounds fucking nuts. I think the older you get, you realize that everything just kind of happens the way it's supposed to. Sure. That's what's really fucked up. You start realizing, you go, yeah, there's a reason Amy's famous. There's a reason this person's famous. There's a reason that, you know, people like my podcast, but I don't have three shows. Like, this is just the way it is. It's like accepting that that's kind of, the chips all kind of fall where they may. As I get older... I'm in my 40s now. I root for guys like you. I really oh, do. Thank you. I'm a. I. You're. You're. It's considered in my mind punk rock. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. That's good to hear. I think we all should root for each other. Everybody that's doing what we're doing, yeah, should all root for each other because we are the independent movement. All these people in, in L.A. with the writing jobs and they're on TV and they make a lot of money, they style themselves as like that they're the new thing or they're victims or they're like breaking through. They are the establishment. Yeah. They are the fucking establishment. We are the ones that are out there doing the independent shit that's cool. The, you know, they are the fucking corporate people and they love to twist it around yeah like skank fest you had all these blue check mark people yelling at skank fest i'm like oh so the guys that do a festival that they created themselves and said fuck the industry they're the problem yeah they're the power brokers they're the patriarchy and these people that make 300 grand a year to write for horrible fucking shows and the people that get all the specials they're the fucking victims how has this happened? Yeah. <clears throat> so I think we should all root for each other, especially that are doing what we're doing. That skank fest, uh, we'll close on this, but yeah. that the spirit, that is what I'm all about. I, yeah. Whatever that was, that's yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing yeah. right now. That's and it. I, it's like there was no gatekeeper. It was just like fucking fans and comics and we're all doing this thing yeah. together. And yeah. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. That's the future, man. That's it. I, yeah. I truly believe that. I believe the future is just... Do it yourself. Put the shit out there. I'm not waiting for a fucking show. I'm not waiting for any of that. I don't think anyone else can. Um, I think you're going to be accountable to your fan base. It's a really, in, in, it's a really like fucking intimate relationship people have with their fan bases now. You know? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that have been coddled by the industry. They've been selected by the gatekeepers and they've been pushed, but they don't have any fans. Nobody cares about them. Um. And those people are constantly going to have to worry every night when they go to sleep. Did I say the wrong thing? Did I do the wrong thing? Am I the flavor of the month? Am I out? Am I too old? Am I this? Am I that? And people like us will build our fan base and then we just were accountable to them. Yeah. So I'm excited for that and not having to worry about what some fat cunt, <laughs> you know, some fucking theater chick who never got laid thanks at some fucking network, you know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. Speaking of uh, pirate ships, where can people find you? Tim Dillon's Going to Hell is the name of the podcast, which is... Uh, independent? You know, it's independent now. It's just very, as you could tell, it's very uplifting. Um, <laughs> I love it. So if you're into uplifting stuff, 
Uh, and Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Uh, the title of this podcast is No One Cares. That's great. <laughs> no one does. And, and I, I'm leaving here feeling pretty good today. Don't you want to go up to people that are doing some and just whisper in their ear go, no one cares. <laughs> Especially at that wall. Yeah, that's it. No one cares. <laughs>